This week's video is concentrated around a building project. We have been working on a sliding entrance door to minimize energy loss. The nursery is growing. Almost every week we're seeding new plants. We also had our first stranger as a guest for this year. And this stranger has now become our friend. Since Wolfie enjoys talking about building projects in detail so much, you gotta enjoy him commenting this video. In the last two weeks our tomatoes and paprikas grew really good, so it was time to put them into their own pots. This is a rather time-consuming process as you touch every single plant. You have to dig them up and put them into a new home. As mentioned, this is a time-consuming process, so Kata was kind enough to make an Apfelstrudel before we started doing this. You will see us eating it throughout the whole part. This work continued long into the night and at the end we were able to relocate nearly 80 plants. All of those plants were placed in our new room, which we built extra for it. You can see this in one of our latest updates. Here you can see how it fills up. And I'm not sure if we won't run out of space soon. As mentioned, this video's main part is about our new swinging door. This door will be placed between the two parts of our building, as this midsection is not isolated and when opening one or the other door of the buildings, you're constantly losing heat. In the first step, we cut down all the wood that we need to a proper size. In the previous video we have shown already when we did this for the frame, here I'm cutting down the smaller parts for the doors. Unfortunately, one of the parts which we desired to use for the frame warped on us pretty bad, so there was no way of getting it to the right dimensions. So we headed out to our local lumber yard and bought some new wood. Unfortunately, the proportion that we needed was not available, so we had to trim and plane this to the right dimension. And I know I have been pointing out this a lot, but I really like this workshop and the machinery we bought with it. It's just a level of professional machines that I would have never thought I'd own or buy for myself. Although we have this very big saw, we aren't able to cut this beam lengthwise open as it is higher than 14 centimeters, which is the maximum we can cut. So we head it to the planer to get it down to a sawable dimension and then back to the saw.
One task that at least once in a month is necessary to do is to clean up the workshop and relocate all the little parts of wood that just have been thrown into a corner. As we needed the maximum space for this project in the workshop, here you can see us doing exactly this, cleaning up and sorting out a little bit our chaos. As the door frame will be held by a slotted pin connection, you can see us here drilling out the slots in which later on the pins will fit. After doing so, we fit the pins to the individual slots that they are, will finally be resting in. As this was quite a process, we shorten it down to this one pin that was shown and go further on to the next step, which is test fitting the frame together to see if everything is square. It's a rather nice feeling if those joints come together and look somewhat appropriate, which I do think in this case we were really close to what I would call um, slightly above hobby-ish carpenter standard. On that topic, pride comes before the fall. When we tried to test fit the frame into its opening, we found out it wouldn't be possible this way, so we had to dismantle one part of it. In the next step, I'm using the router to make a rabbit for the door. As this is quite a bit of wood that we take away, I'll do this in multiple passes. Later on, I found out that this router, although being battery driven and rather small, can handle even the whole depth. Here you can see what the final layout of the doors should look like. And we start the doors the same way as we started the frame, with drilling some slots for the pins. This is a little bit of a different angle, it represents Nini's artistic talent for the videography. And something that always comes when you do slots and pins, you have to adjust them a little bit, which you can see us doing here. When we were test fitting the doors, we were pretty amazed how square they become. Here we're making a new rabbit with a router for the glass inlay, which will come in most likely the next video. And finally the big moment has come. We are gluing together the doors. And with every glue up it's the same. I prefer to have an extra pair of hands on the job because this glue dries fast.
At this point, thanks Eero for all your help at gluing up and doing the other stuff that we haven't filmed so far. Next we take care about a lot of small details that have to be done, like cleaning up the glued on weatherboards, braiding and try fitting the guide rails, and in general montaging the whole fittings for the door which make it slide. And as usual, I turn to Kata for work when there is a lot to be routed as she is really good with it and very precise, especially rounding over corners. And she can also in parallel take care of a rather nasty job, this is sanding down the whole frames. Some more quick holes for the door hardware. And there we go, that should be the way the door opens. Of course, standing up straight and having glass in it, but in theory at least this is what it should look like. <laughs> 